Hi, everybody. It's meteorologist Joe Chaffee on this Wednesday, as we seem to be in the umpteenth day in a row, at least here uh, on Long Island, where I am, in uh, overcast skies. We've had a few downpours and some drizzle. I think this is going to be the last day before we start to see some genuine improvement. Now, I want to point out that we do have a marginal risk of severe weather for later this afternoon into tonight. The Storm Prediction Center has that extending from northeastern Virginia uh, on up uh, through New Jersey to about New York City. So from there, north and west, with a small area of slight risk, north of Route 84 in the Hudson Valley, northwestern Connecticut, western Massachusetts, Vermont, and New Hampshire. I have to tell you, quite honestly, judging from what I'm seeing with the atmospheric profiles, I'm not really too overly impressed with this. Uh, much like yesterday where we had these uh, strong thunderstorms develop in central Pennsylvania. As soon as they got to about just west of I-81, they fell apart. I mean, that's how entrenched the marine layer was, along not just along the coast, but all the way inland into eastern PA and up through the Hudson Valley and in, in through much of New England. So it was really hard for these storms to hold together. Once they get into that marine environment, uh, the cool marine air just basically kills them. The atmosphere becomes more stable. Now we do have a marginal to slight risk also for parts of Kansas into Missouri. And you can see that marginal risk extends actually up into Northwestern Colorado and, and Nebraska, and another small area of marginal risk in the Northern Rockies up into Northern Idaho and Mon Northwest Montana, and also a marginal risk in Southwest Texas. So with pockets of potential severe weather, but it doesn't look like any kind of widespread outbreak. So uh, we'll look at the satellite view and it's oh so close. We've got dry air not that far away, uh, right back uh, in through central, uh, east central Pennsylvania. There's that weather front that's moving on through. What happened yesterday, which was uh, pretty interesting, uh, we had a low that developed uh, just offshore, a very weak low. It didn't really have much with it. And what happened was that it just kind of pinched a bit of a marine flow, a little nose of marine air from a high that was sitting out in the Atlantic. And that allowed that marine air to penetrate pretty far to the west. So that's why it killed all the thunderstorms as they moved toward the, uh, not even just toward the coastline, but even into places like Western New Jersey, Eastern PA, they just kind of died out. Now today, that marine layer is gonna be pushed a little further to the east. So I'm thinking that, uh, you know, just how this, the Storm Prediction Center yesterday did a very good job outlining the easternmost edge of the slight risk and that kind of was where the thunderstorms fell apart so if you want to use that measure today uh, just along or just inland of the coast uh, you might see some storms hold together but you know judging from what the models are showing and, and and the amount of energy that's really around in the upper atmosphere with this disturbance moving from the great lakes uh, on up uh, eastward i'm really not again not too impressed by it meanwhile you can see there's a lot of moisture into southwestern Texas that's uh, building up, and that accounts for the severe weather there. That may occur later today, and also uh, in through uh, parts of Kansas and Nebraska, you can see this little disturbance uh, dropping down uh, that may trigger off some cells. And then out on the, in the west, we actually do have moisture into California, and you can see it here, uh, zooming on up uh, northward into Oregon and Washington. So there's uh, something here in the upper atmosphere that's going to trigger off some thunderstorms. And you have this weather system out in the Pacific Ocean that continues to um, move along to the east. So uh, we will uh, look first at the HRRR model for today. You can see the short range models really don't do very much. Uh, late this afternoon, you start to see some cells develop out to the west. But once we get past sundown, you know, some of them hold together up in Connecticut and Massachusetts. Some of them also hold together in eastern Pennsylvania and in the Hudson Valley. But it doesn't seem to be like there's like there's going to be one wholesale line of storms. And uh, the NAM model today, we should have enough of the new NAM so that we could take a look and see where this is going. Um, probably doesn't produce much at all. At least it didn't overnight. And you can see that flare up that's late this afternoon across so central PA, and then it just dies. So I, again, I'm not really too overly concerned about this. So this should be the last day of uh, let's call it pain and suffering, and uh, we will uh, let me widen out here so we can take a view of what we expect to happen over the coming days. I think we're going to dry out somewhat tomorrow. Uh, the uh, model does want to have some sort of leftover disturbance swinging through tomorrow morning. For areas to the east 
Uh, maybe that triggers a morning shower over parts of eastern Long Island and southeastern New England, but other than that, should be a pretty decent day. Uh, there's uh, uh, another weak weather front here. This is tomorrow night. You just barely pick it out, but that's right in there. It's a very small scale frontal system. Meanwhile, you got all this tropical moisture that's shooting up into, out of the Gulf of Mexico into coastal Texas and Louisiana for tomorrow and even over into Florida. So there are probably going to be some downpours to deal with there. Now, one of the issues will be the weekend. Uh, to me, uh, the weather looks fine for Friday overall in the Northeast. We do have yet another front that's coming through. Uh, looks like Friday night, early Saturday morning, you can kind of pick it out here. Maybe there's a shower or thunderstorm with that, and that goes by. Now, we've been looking at the possibility of some rain here later Sunday and Sunday night. Last night's run of the GFS uh, kind of went a different route here. It, it wants to actually go back to what it was doing a couple of days ago, which is kind of wedge in some dry air here and uh, keep the moisture uh, away for at least an extra 12 hours. So this would suggest to me, I mean, certainly Saturday looks okay, and that much of Sunday may wind up being okay along our area, the area along the coast, eastern PA up into southern New England. And you can see the rain over the Great Lakes and Ohio Valley down in the Gulf states because the model then wants to take a low southeast uh, into Virginia and then move it out northeastward from there off the Virginia coast uh, with an onshore flow for Monday into Tuesday. So I'm not 100% sure whether this is going to be the case or not. The European model didn't quite do this. Uh, it's got more of a northern track, uh, but you know there's been this tendency lately for even the slightest hint of blocking in the atmosphere to force these lows to go further south. So I wouldn't at all be surprised. And then after that, it's high pressure to the north and an onshore flow through a good chunk of next week. Now, I don't think it looks like the high is far enough south where it actually could be mostly dry uh, throughout much of our area. And on the cool side of normal, uh, with the stronger onshore flow, flow and clouds further south from uh, Virginia down uh, in through the Carolinas and Georgia. So we're going to keep our eyes on that. Then just then the model next weekend. The weekend of June 9th and uh, 10th and 11th starts to spin up some kind of a low off the Carolina coast and takes it out to the east. I'm, you know, I'm not at the point now to start paying too much attention to those things uh, as far as the tropics are concerned. When we get there, I'll worry about it. In the meantime, let's look out in the west for my western audience and take a look at what's happening here. You know, we mentioned yesterday we seem to be going into sort of typical early June mode in the west. Uh, looks like some action in the plains as we move into Saturday, but much of the west looks fairly quiet, other than occasional flare-ups of some showers and storms in the northern Rockies. Um, actually, yeah, this is for, um, you know, the middle of next week, some kind of system moving across the northern Rockies. But, you know, the weather through much of the west looks fairly benign, as you would expect it to be um, this time of year. So uh, we'll see where it goes. Quick check of the upper air pattern. And let's punch that up for you. And let's roll it back. Now, we've been talking about the fact that we've been seeing these deep, these troughs in the east, and that continues. Here's the look for tomorrow in the upper air. I mean, you've got this long jet that runs down from northernmost Canada right down into the eastern part of the United States. And you've got a ridge from Labrador on up to Greenland. There actually is a little bit of a blocking high uh, east of Greenland. Uh, it, it's not as far west as the blocking high that we saw a few weeks ago or the one that followed it. Uh, this one looks you know, a little more east-based, but it's there enough to keep this troughing in the eastern part of the United States. And, and you can see how that continues right through next week with weather systems swinging down and around. One after another seem to be... Um, piling on into the eastern uh, U eastern Canada, down into the eastern U.S., uh, ridge up the Rockies, trough along the West Coast. Now, one of the things I've just been noticing in terms of like a really overall long-term scope is the fact that as we have moved through the spring and actually even moved through the winter into spring and going back to when we had the El Nino from uh, a year ago, uh, waning down you know we've been kind of working that heat in the atmosphere off for the last year and a half or so and uh 
one of the things I've been noticing is that, you know, these troughs in the east, which were almost non-existent for a while, seem to be happening with greater and greater frequency now. And the ridges that have been building in the east seem to be happening less and less. And when they do happen, they last for shorter and shorter periods of time. Um, we had it pop up just for a couple of days in the uh, beginning of May and again in the middle of May. If you take out the three days in the month of May where temperatures got into the 90s, uh, the month of May in much of the Northeast would have finished uh, almost three degrees below average in some cases. Although that, those three hot days actually uh, brought that up to about a, a one degree below average. But it's amazing how much impact those three days have. But my point is that you know we seem to be going into something different here as we, we look forward. So I'm going to be very curious to see where that takes us. Now, before we go, I just want to show you we do have, you know, uh, tomorrow is the beginning of hurricane season. And the hurricane season in the Pacific has already started. And we do have uh, what looks like a tropical depression forming uh, south of the coast of Mexico, and it's drifting northward here. So I'm wondering if some of this moisture may eventually wind up in the Gulf of Mexico or up into Texas. So I'll have to, I'll have to look at this a, a bit closer. But uh, the National Hurricane Center does the, give this a 90% probability of becoming a tropical depression in the next 24 to 48 hours. And it may, uh, if it stays offshore long enough, it's likely to become a tropical storm. Uh, so let's, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll begin to look at these tropical systems with more uh, detail uh, and over the, over the coming weeks and months as we get deeper into hurricane season. All right, tonight, if you're on Long Island, Patchogue Bedford Library at 7 o'clock. I'll be there to talk about uh, weather stuff and talk about the upcoming hurricane season. Uh, so uh, if you are on Long Island, by all means, please come out. And thank you for being here on my YouTube channel. Uh, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel by just uh, hitting the little red subscribe button uh, on the channel page. It's absolutely free, and you get notifications every time new videos come up. All right, everybody have a great day, and we'll talk to you tomorrow.